Hey guys, I managed to get my hands on an amazing replay between Soin and Moon, two of the best players in the world. They both happen to hail from South Korea and Moon is of course one of the greatest players of all time, whereas Soin is more of a newer player on the scene. Nonetheless, lots of experience, but he's really coming to his own in the last few years. This game is incredible. I do not yet know the result. And while this is take three because we had some technical difficulties and I've only seen the first few minutes, I'm about to cast this game for you and everything that this game will ensue. So let's begin. Let's talk about the openers. There are a bunch of different openers that every player can do. Orc has valid openers such as Blademaster first, Farseer first. They can go for one burrow before they upgrade their great hold to stronghold or they could go for two burrows. They can play with a shop or without. When they play Fars here, they can play with Headhunters or with Grunts. And when they play Blade, they can go with Headhunters or with Grunts. And finally, Fars here always starts with Feral Spirits, but Blade can open either with Windwalk or Mirror Image. So there's a bunch of different openers, but by far the most standard one is a single burrow with one Grunt into a Voodoo Lounge, then upgrading to Great Hall, your Great Hall to Stronghold, and then adding a second burrow. The one grunt opener doesn't provide you with a large standing army early, but it does get your second hero and your additional tier 2 tech structures out very quickly. Alright, let's take a look at the Night Elf base. Elves have a variety of different openings they can do. As a race, they are most suited to tavern hero openers. As they have moon wells, they can kind of compensate some of the weaknesses some starting heroes may have. It has not been unusual for me to see solo hero Pitlord, Panda, Dark Ranger, or Beastmaster, or even Firelord coming out as the first hero from Night Elf. But currently the two most standard opening heroes, especially against Orc, are either Keeper of the Grove or Demon Hunter. The goal for Demon Hunter is that he's essentially the best mid to late game hero when it comes to playing against Orc because of his very strong tankiness, the mana burn, and perhaps even immolation depending on how you play. You can open with Archer and then into Huntresses, or you can go Mass Archers. And Keeper of the Grove is more favored to go for more early game power, early game defensiveness via being able to entangle enemy hero or in particular Grunts and finishing them off as they are taking damage and being rooted. And he's also good for early attacks. Rushing Keeper level 3 would allow you to do a very powerful tier 2 attack picking up Naga second or Beastmaster second, and then immediately attacking the Orc. With level two Entangle, almost any Grunt has a bullseye on their head if you manage to entangle them and force them down with a couple of archers. Keeper of the Grove also offers Treants, summons that allow you to tank creeps and to creep faster. And eventually, if he gets level six, he can even go for Tranquility, a very powerful aura. So both kind of crept, blade almost level 2, keeper level 2, and now as Moon wants to do this third creep camp right here, the blade master is there to interrupt. And Moon seems to be caught kind of with his pants down, metaphorically speaking. He's gonna go for the ogre warrior, but he will be last hitting it with the ancient of war in the panic of the blade master's antagonism. He takes a lot of hits from the blade master, tries to squeeze away through here, and wants to last hit this troll trapper with two consecutive auto attacks. But as he would otherwise escape, the ogre blocks his path. He's forced to escape from the top. Blade steals the Tome of Intelligence plus two and chases the Keeper. Keeper's gonna die? There's the hit. <laughs> 13 health and instead of town portaling, Moon entangles him and walks away. He knows the speed scroll's about to run out and he's gonna take a gamble that he can outrun the blade. The blade is ever so slightly faster but had a little bit of a stop. Sometimes you try to issue an attack. Oh, he gets him. He gets the Keeper, big risk for Moon, and he pays the price. There was a little bit stop animation, as it looked like Keeper might almost get away as Windwalk was running out. But the Blade Master managed to take down the Keeper. A huge win Players for Soin, as attack. he's headed towards a very strong early game advantage. Two grunts have been made by Soin. He has not made a third grunt. He has made an eighth Lumber Peon. Did a lot of scouting with Peon around his base to check for Ancient Protectors. And he's sending one Peon into Moon's base to check if he can perhaps glean information about Moon's tech route. He sees four Moonwell and a finishing Tree of Life. 
into a Tree of Ages. No Hunter's Hall. So at this point, it looks like it's going to be Moss, Ancient of Wind into Ancient of Talents. As Ancients of Lore require a Hunter's Hall prerequisite. And he even gets conf confirmation that there's an Ancient of Wind. So Soin knows everything. He Windwalks away, chooses Windwalk level 2 as his third ability. You could also go Mirror Image for upgrading Critical Strike. And he did not see the Keeper, Staff of Teleporting in. Moon finishes this camp with Ancient of War, ports in with the Staff of Teleportation, and attacks the Grunt with Entangle. He goes in, maybe for a second Entangle. He gets the second Entangle and runs away. Will he get the experience for it? He will not. It was a Lin deny. So of the two grounds that Lin made, one survived, one died. But the one that died was at least denied, so that Keeper does not get that crucial level 3. Meanwhile, second hero is going to be Demon Hunter. Wonders and Double Ancient of Wind. And this is going to be the Mass Druid of the... Sorry, not Lin. It's Soin. How many times did I say Lin? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Soin. Very good. Did I just say it the one? Only four times? Oh. That's fine. So we have Moon going for Druids of the Talon. And these are really good because you can fairy fire and re remove someone's armor. And also get vision. And you can also cyclone enemy heroes a lot. Which of course drops their DPS. And then you can try to focus down all the units. Talons don't deal a lot of damage. But they are disabled specialists. Very important steal there by Moon. Moon now has both watch awards, which... If, if you told anyone that never played Warcraft 3 what these are... Invulnerable, invisible, permanent, indestructible sentry wards that have true sight. That reveal your opponent anytime they walk past it. And they control the most pivotal area of the map, the Goblin Shop. Yeah, that's a pretty imbalanced thing you can pick up from the camps. So there's always a huge priority on getting at least one of them. Or, if you're very good, you get two of them and Moon got it. He does what I call cheese creeping. Not because it's cheesy, but because he's only taking the cheese off the sandwich. See? It's like the, the behavior that kids display when they are eating a sandwich that their mother packed them to school. They think the bread is too dry and tasteless. So they just take the cheese with the butter, they eat it, and then they throw the bread in the trash bin. Pour them on with their efforts, trying to come up with a nice school lunch for their favorite boy. But yeah, uh, he actually finishes the bread as well, so Moon is being a good boy. But this is something that sometimes players do. They eat the cheese off the bread. He finished the crust afterwards, after ripping it off. And uh, Lin opens with Raider Shaman strategy. And a very early fortified... Sorry, not Lin, Soin. Very early fortified towers so that he can expand. Funny thing about this war mill location. It's good for like two minutes. Then the trees are gone and you wish you had actually made it here or here. Soin pulls the turtle rock. The gargantuan sea turtle. Level 7 towards him. There are four giant sea turtles in the middle of the map. And all of them drop very powerful consumables. It's a pivotal area of turtle rock to control, to get. These items offer momentum because they are large consumables, like Potion of Greater Mana. Whereas the red spots on the map, including the Troll Warlord and the Ogre Lord that Moon is presently creeping, offer permanent scaling like via the ancient Django of endurance which is an insane item even though it got nerfed it used to be uh, I believe 5% attack speed and 10% movement speed for the item it's still really good 3% attack speed 5% move speed for your whole army so it doesn't give as much power as the mana pot in the first fight but you have it the rest of the game and if this game is going long then it's going to give a lot of value. Soin sees Moon's expansion attempt and tries to cancel it with Blade. But 
he does the blade but he does not pursue him he's pretending like he doesn't know that blade is still here and he's coming in okay this is interesting he must have thought that soin is waiting to stop a teleport out and that's why he's coming with his army to catch him whereas soin was thinking i'm not gonna go out i'm just gonna go kill the tree and then tp away and that's what happened two mana burns one dead raider nothing else died soin tps out cancels the tree of life or was it a kill no it's a cancel and moon starts a tree of life somewhere else so what's the situation moon is remaking wisps he's staying at a pretty modest amount of uh, supply right now 44 that means he could slot in a hero he could slot in something else so far going with a quite unusual double hero usually this strat goes with triple and moon attacks from the correct angle those towers would have been real annoying with his unarmored talents but by attacking from the right, he can start a fight, and he knows that even though this Great Hall is almost dead, if he can push Soin back, he can still cancel this Great Hall, because unfinished buildings do not have armor type. So is he gonna click the Great Hall while getting attacked by all these snakes and units? Or is he just taking a favorable fight because of Soin's desperation to attack this, to protect this Great Hall? Shadowhunter is going down, does not have any save items. Shadowhunter has been killed. So, Moon made his choice, right? He lost almost nothing. Almost nothing. Maybe, maybe two, three talents the most. He killed so much, but he let the expansion finish. A fateful decision, because he could have also gone for the Great Hall, lose maybe six talents, and cancel the Great Hall. Maybe continually cyclone the shadow hunter and the blade and then just click it down. So Moon is content to let it finish. Felt like it was the best choice. It's gonna go for the red spot. And what did Lin get from the red spot? Oh, he didn't get it yet. Oh, ain't no way that Moon is getting both. So uh, Soin is very low population. I said Lin again, I know. Soin is very low population. I've been casting and seeing Lin against Moon so much, it's so iconic. Uh, Soin does not have to do... Does not have three of the big red items. Talisman of Evasion, Cloak of Flames, and Ancient Django of Endurance are just insane buffs for Moon right now. And the only thing Soin could potentially get is this Troll Warlord. What's he going to get? Bone Chimes, True Shot Aura, Boots of Elven Skin. Well, they're called Quell to us now. I guess it's racist to skin elves and then wear their skin. I think it's nice. It's a game. And I know the difference between a game and real life, right? In real life, I would never skin an elf because they don't exist. I would if they did exist, but they don't. So you can't cancel me technically for such an opinion. But anyway, they're called Boots of Quell to us now. As if that's any better. Everyone knows Quel'Thalas is full of elves. So you still stole their boots, if anything. Because I don't think orcs normally have boots of Quel'Thalas. Maybe with AliExpress? So Moon, he's staying under 50 population. He saves his tree. And he gets the final red spot item as well. That is insane. That is such an insane bonus. And all that Soin has is an earlier expansion money that's all he got money but what is it good for oh, <laughs> oh my god stop this guy no freaking way true Please shot seven percent bonus damage we've got bonus attack speed move speed we've got permanent immolation we have extra talisman of evasion now here's a funny little uh, thing that i didn't know when i was competing talisman of evasion and this would be the first of many lies that Blizzard would eventually tell, but this was a lie that I still believed in and I didn't know and discovered recently, but it was one of their first. Causes attacks against the wearer to miss 15% of the time, but does not stack with Demon Hunter's Evasion or Pandaren's Drunken Brawler. Guess what? It does. It actually stacks, and it took Dota 1 slash Dota 2 to find out that it does. 
It doesn't stack how you would like it to stack. It stacks like, I don't know, if you would like multiplicatively, it stacks additively or something like that. Or it checks one and then it checks the other. It's not as good on Demon as on others, but it still helps. It still stacks. It's a separate instance. It actually stacks and it's pretty insane. So it says that it doesn't, but it does. So he's keeping it. I feel like maybe someone on... Because Moon streams now, right? And what, if there's one thing that everyone knows about streaming is that you get so smart being a streamer. There's so much raw, intelligent information from chat, whether it's on Twitch or on YouTube or on Douyu or wherever he streams now. There's so much intelligence in chat. So he TPs... Oh, he stopped the teleport here. So he still has TP now. So he probably learned from chat or something. Okay, okay. Moon is gonna have to click his demon, give invul to Keeper, and then... There we go. And now he has to give Staff of Preservation to the Demon Hunter. Right now. Or he's gonna lose his Keeper. He's gonna lose his Keeper. He didn't give the Staff. Nice assassination by Soin. And while snakes are hissing and getting all prissy and all what... The Blade assassinates the Keeper of the Grove, the Talons. Completely untouched. And no new expansion yet. I feel like this was a perfect time for Soin to throw up additional expansions. He still has Pound Tordo on the Shaman. On his uh, Shadow Hunter. Shadow Shaman lol. What is that? I don't know that hero. I never heard of her. I'm assuming he does have Pillage, right? Please tell me he has Pillage. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check, don't worry. If this 7 stays 7 when the Raider hits, I am going to fire him from my esports team. He has no pillage. He's fired. Of course I don't have an esports team, but it's more of like a fantasy league. So he lost so much money for not killing any of these trees with pillage. He does not have pillage. This is uh, highly illegal. Luckily, it's a mistake I never made, neither on stream, nor when I was new to the game, nor when I was actively competing. I was one of the biggest pillagers in the game. Ah, okay, I made it a couple of times. It's always very embarrassing because it's a small cost, long research time, and lots of money lost when you're when you start killing buildings. So Moon is now activating his macro style. It's his most well-known characteristic. Expansions everywhere, just mushrooming up all over the place, connected by the mycelial network of his brain. And it's all Soin can do to try and raise the buildings to the ground before Moon inevitably throws up three Chimera roosts and flies with a gaggle of Chimera over the map, blasting everything with their unholy blue magic electricity magnetism thing so that's a well zoned defense by moon there's a lot of raiders uh, still no pillage but that's okay that's okay no new expansion yet so this is kind of an all-in but i don't feel like soin has hero levels that are strong enough to all in with and what's that tome of retraining going to be for is he reskilling to mirror image? Oh my god, I've never seen that against talents. So is he done scouting with Blade Master? And he's just gonna... Actually kind of a good idea, right? Like, mirror images do give experience, but if he's like splitting it to four... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just cycling them all. So it already paid off. That's a lot of mana on talents. Because he simply doesn't know which one is real. Nice Raider attack on the Talons. They're getting really good connection with the Talons. And one thing, of course, that is true is that while Talons are so strong when they first come out with Cyclone, eventually you can upgrade your units, but Talons do not receive any attack or armor upgrades unless it is about them being in Crow form in the air. But then they can only attack air, and so he doesn't have any air. Moon does have an air. He has four children. And still so good in Warcraft 3. That's incredible. I don't know how many of you have children. Or how much worse you got at games. When you got children. Because of the time expenditure and whatnot. But it doesn't seem to be slowing Moon down at all. 
Very epic fight. Oh, he's decided to just go for it. He's speed scrolling into the base. He's gonna take down the base. We've got seven wisps on duty to repair. It's gotta be bam, 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 and snare. Drop that repair ability. There's maybe about five cyclones left. He doesn't think he's gonna be able to make it. Immolation is wreaking havoc on these raiders. Two raiders go down. Many were very low. And it could be an instant staff of teleportation from Keeper or Demon if he's feeling frisky enough towards this wisp to cancel these towers. But no, it's time to reset. And I must say, I have not seen dedicated double hero strategies by Moon or with talents in quite some time. He's really doing it on purpose. He wants to get tranquility. He wants to get metamorphosis. And by not splitting experience with a third person, He's able to get those levels up quicker. And he's getting close. Level 5.5, 5.5. Shadow, only level 4.9. Blade Master. How close are we to Blade Storm? Where's, where's the Blady boy? There he is. Level 5.7. No invulnerability. He seems poor. How is it possible? Is it maybe the absence of pillage? And meanwhile, Moon, like a Hydra. New heads popping up over and over. <laughs> We've got an expansion here. Here. There's a new base coming up here. And here. Every base that Soin does not have, Moon is taking. And, come on. He's taking it to extremes. Then there's a Wisp here as well. He's putting on a show. What are the upgrades for Raiders here? I will say, if this was Lin and not Moon, Lin would have more upgrades. He'd be, I, I, I want to believe that he would at least have 2-0, 2-1, 1-1, and that he would have pillage. And I would have it as well, except I would have lost by now in my current shape. But I would have given these guys a run for their money if I was still practicing a lot right now. Where are the wisps? Wisps detonate on shamans? He should empty this gold mine and send in the wisps. I would also love to see some lightning shield on talents. You know, I, I used to have this cool strat where you ensnare a talent and you lightning shield it at the same time. So then they cannot crow form it. So then you've got this beacon of pain in the center of the army. I like the mirror image idea. I've never seen this before against talents. Look at that, level six blade master. He doesn't have armor upgrades. He doesn't have Spirit Link, but he just has a lot of stuff, a lot of snakes. He's making sure he's got enough uh, heal waves and mana on his Shadow Hunter. And it's especially those snakes that are so annoying. I wonder if it'd be worth to get like Hippo Riders or maybe Archers. I know they die real quick, but currently Talents, you know, Talents cannot attack Serpent Wards because they're magic immune. So the only thing that can attack Serpent Wards are treants and heroes and maybe fairy dragons which get wrecked by snakes so now soin suddenly has this extremely powerful army set up i will say if he casts one more spell all the shamans are gonna die to the fairy dragons because they do splash damage revenge on any spell cast but what moon has is all these bases he's got a tower coming up next to the tree of life here and keeper is level six boys and he's still got all those permanent value items, don't forget. He did sell True Shot. For real? He sold True Shot Aura. He really needed money that bad with 19 bases. That's... I did not expect that. True Shot Aura with 7% damage offers like what? 4 on the Keeper? And then 1 damage on Talents. 1 damage, 1 bonus damage. That's still an increase of 8%. 8.5%. Not too bad. And I think, and I'm not sure, that it might work on Demon Hunter when he becomes ranged. When he turns on Metamorphosis. He probably needed the money to make another expansion. So Peon is going to go to the red spot here. The mains, of course, have run out by now. We've got double, ra double Beastry Raiders. 1-1 one, one upgrades now. And capped at 55 population. Whereas Moon is at 73. He's also got Hunter's Hall. And he's starting to make beast upgrades. 
And he's making two Ancient of War per base, with Nature's Blessing, of course, to defend. So, why is he making Hunter's Hole upgrades? Well, they apply to DOTT in the air, which he's not going to put in the air. It does apply to Fairy Dragons, which can try to help kill snakes, though they're not really good at it. It's also going to help for any future Chimera, Mountain Giants, Dryads, or Bears. And I think especially Mountain Giants or Chimera are most likely to see an appearance in this game, if it gets to that point. Demon Hunter turns on Metamorphosis, he brings the Wisps. This meta was a while ago. What? I'm not sure when he casted it or why. But it's over already. That was a very short meta, I didn't see most of it. Ring of Health is so good too, with this much survivability. I think he can Cyclone more Raiders, actually. He's being a little timid with it. He wants to make sure he always has enough mana to take care of the heroes. See how snakes wreck fairy dragons? It doesn't matter if you have one armor upgrade. Pretty sure that those upgrades were for something else. Another expo coming up. Two towers per... Look at that pattern. About two towers per base. And Moon does the same thing. Two Ancient of War per base. Roughly. And more armor upgrades. And Tranquility. Okay, so let, let's talk about transitions. All right. The main thing is, Soy never has a lot of wood. He's always on the edge with his wood. He's always on the edge with his wood. Um... Hmm. Let's rephrase. He's always very low on lumber. Three peons on lumber right now. And that means that he cannot transition easily to tier 3. He no longer has Kodo Beast. It must have died. And it's kind of slow, so it's not very good at hit and run. And he goes here without Town Portal. Dude, this is so risky. For a base that only has 2,000 gold left in it. So this is more of like a knock-knock joke than it is a full, like, kill the base and run. He wants to knock-knock and he wants Moon to say who is there. And then he's gonna run back. He really just wants to fight. This is an excuse to fight more than anything. This isn't a, I'm gonna kill the Tree of Life and run. Because you can't. And anytime you set up and you choose the location where to fight first as Orc, you're at the advantage because of the snakes. And check out how much HP these Serpent Wards have. 200, 200 HP and they do 50 damage. Piercing. Which does bonus on talents. He goes for the Keeper. Keeper still has Town Portal. He can just TP right here. Double heal scroll just to save the Keeper. Very expensive. And he does TP right here, I would say. Oh, a bit more aggressive. Actually relevant because... The fairy dragons that are already in mana flare mode remain in mana flare throughout town portal and there's a cooldown on them so if he wanted to make sure to keep mana flare in a relevant location the forward tp definitely achieved that i also learned for the first time that mana flare tp'd fairy dragons do not have collision and of course, air units never truly have collision, as you can make all of your worms or chimera share a single space by spam right-clicking in one area. But there is an auto-spreading rule for air, where if they occupy the same space and you're not spam clicking in the same place, or clicking in, in general, they will auto-fan out. And apparently that does not apply to fairy dragons. I'm assuming it's probably because... When they're in mana flare mode, they have zero movement speed. And it uses their own movement speed to auto-fan out. Anytime you don't use a unit's own movement speed to auto-move units in order to make pathfinding work, you get a result like in Age of Empires 4, where you can actually exceed the maximum movement speed of a unit by doing certain formation tricks. You saw this in Age of Empires 4, where you can make villagers run as fast as knights by constantly changing direction so that the peasants that are the villagers that are stuck at the back would speed up to catch up with the front so you're essentially speed scrolling them for free so i think blizzard's method is better and the side result of it is that the mana flare fairy dragons can occupy the same space 
That's interesting. I learned that today, actually. I was today years old. So I think he still has Metamorphosis. He could use it. And this would be a good place to use it because he could afterwards move onto one of Soyan's expansions. But for now, he's going to heal up. And then he's going to Staff of Teleportation back in. And there was a very short Tranquility that lasted about as long as... Maybe one or two seconds, as long as Soin it, it took him to click a raider and then ensnare. A lot of snakes here. Epic fights between them. 75 population right now for Soin. His raider upgrades are still 1-1. One, one. Snakes not currently target firing the fairy dragons. They are offering some XP. How much is it? I think it must be something like 50 XP per, per serpent. Uh, ward invil potion on demon hunter could go meta meta gives a 500 hp max but also current so it's essentially a greater healing potion there we go metamorphosis 1475 health he's got only eight armor 33 percent damage reduction but he still has evasion He can't get stopped because he's perma ensnared. He's gonna try to TP out to save the Demon Hunter. It's gonna come down to winner. There's a crit. He cyclones the blade. Removes the chance of another crit. Just a single crit. Then cyclone. Block the final auto attack. And in doing so, guarantees the save on Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter heals full. Still has some measure of metamorphosis. Comes back into the fight. Now Moon is feeling the pressure. As his keeper is surrounded without Town Portal. I think he does have Tranquility again. It's really short cooldown, so he could just try to hit it. Soin's army does not seem to be going down much. And he's expanding everywhere. This is crazy. And for some reason, Moon is on four Ancient of Wind talents while still upgrading his Fairy Dragons to three, three upgrades. Never transitioning to another unit why just fairy dragons where are the chimera mountain giants and bears has he tried that before maybe he has tried it before in private practice sessions and he has found it to be not as good it's possible pretty sick man of course maybe he's just gonna it actually looks like he's gonna spam fairy dragons but that's such a weird strat choice because not only do serpent wards destroy them, the raiders ensnare them and then they die to blade master, but there's also double bestiary to make bat riders. And I will say I am surprised there are no bat riders. That was my go-to response always against uh, fairies, but that's also because in my meta time, it would be TC second, so you didn't have shadow hunter with snakes. So now he just wants to get value kills on fairy dragons without needing to constantly waste bat riders or play the game of chicken with whether they turn on mana flare on time which would block the bat rider damage because of their high armor huge fight here we cannot zoom out enough to encompass the entire fight really really sick there's a kodo dragon there as well a kodo dragon a komodo dragon oh that's where it came from a komodo beast fun story about komodo dragon I went to Indonesia once, the land of my people. I'm part Indonesian, as I'm sure you can tell from looking at my face. And we went to the Komodo Islands. And there was this German tourist that stopped his... Uh, okay, we'll talk about it later. Bladestorm taking out the Demon Hunter. He's permanent and snared. He's unable to get Staff of Preservation out. Moon is running away with his Keeper of the Grove. There is... There could be a Hex. There could be a Hex. But he's... He's playing as if there's no Hex, so he's really pushing the envelope of buying as much time as possible. And now the Ents are going to war. Talents and Ents certainly are a lot more scary than just Talents. He's at 84 population Mass Talent Fairy Dragons, and the Tranquility nurses everyone back to full, while the Orcish army is dropping in health. So anyway, the German tourist, he stubbed his toe when we got to the island and it started bleeding. And we had guides and the Komodo dragons were essentially, if they felt like it and they did a little short sprint, they could have taken a nice bite out of anyone's leg. 
But the guides, of course, are aware of their behavior. We visited at a time where they generally are very restful. If you don't know, Komodo dragons are one of the biggest lizards in the world and their saliva is the grossest thing ever. It's full of toxins, poisons, bacteria, and pretty much if they bite you, you're gonna have a bad time, really bad time. And maybe not a lot of it, of that bad time. So anyway, this guy's foot was bleeding and I was kind of laughing because the Komodo dragons all started taking note. Kind of like a bunch of construction workers when I walk by and they're like, hmm, sexy. That's how they were looking at him. And their tongue started flicking out of their mouth. They clearly t smelled the blood, but they felt too lazy and tired to go after him. And while I was laughing and I thought he would see the humor of it as well, he actually looked stressed and angry that I was... Maybe that he had, was bleeding or that he was laughing. I think he was a bit scared, but he was trying to act cool. So he turned it to anger. I thought he should have just keep your eyes open. Anyway, the next fight breaks out. <laughs> next fight breaks out. He's going to go for the Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter this time is the one that carries the town portal. So he won't be able to get perma and snared and killed anymore. And Moon also has town portal and keeper. So he's much safer than before. And with this many Ancients of War, he's marching. And there's a tranquility. He can make sure to keep any raider away that would like to go for the interrupt with his cyclone. So Soin down to four peel mining here, hasn't filled it out yet. This one only has 2,400 gold left. And his first base is down to 600 gold remaining. The Ancients of Wars are self-healing. Keeper is self-healing. Four Ancients of Wind pumping away. And the 3-3 three, three upgraded talents and fairy dragons one of the biggest misinvestments i've ever seen they still have those upgrades still no other unit types there's still this very coveted fifteen thousand gold mine left to the left here that someone should love to take it looks like it's gonna finish relatively soon the game moon should be able to push and win keeper of the Grove gets an Entangle on the Kodu Beast. There is finally a tier 3 tech by Soin, and he is 86 population. That's a lot of army. Hex would be so good on Demon Hunter to shut down some of that DPS it's putting out. Finally, we're getting some Lightning Shields, but this Talon immediately micro to turn it against the Orcish army. Such presence of mind by Moon to turn the Talon that takes Cyclone immediately against him. The other Talon not so much though and is actively ah oh, there we go amazing awareness keeper of the grove staffed away the demon hunter who now staffs back in after getting a full heal a second life as soin dropped to 66 population with even less wood 60 but has 3500 gold what's he gonna make with that He's tier 3. He's getting War Drum's damage increase, bringing Kodo damage bu buff from 10% to 20%. Does not work on Serpent Wards, by the way. That would be the day. Now let's answer some questions that you may have that nobody asked. Why no Headhunters? They're pretty good against Talents. They are good against Talents, but there are so many other factors. Ancients of War, Heroes, Force of Nature, Treants, Entangle, you know, Demon Honor, Immolation. All of these are really, really, really good against Headhunters. And they have relatively short range, shorter than Talents. So it's pretty hard to make an impact with them. So instead you go with the tankier Raiders that also happen to have building killing capacity, unlike Headhunters. Double heal scroll, mana pot, and no speed scroll. Got so many talents, man. Holy crap. 80 population, healthy gold and wood numbers for Moon. There are the fairy dragons. We do have Bloodlust now. And I'm wondering, is there gonna be Taran Chieftain for endurance?
talent the serpent wards are continually focused fired on talents which is exactly what you want to do wow after the demon tp'd and everything attacked an alternative target so many talents died does he have pillage yet he still doesn't have pillage oh my god you know what this feels like you get really really drunk at the club with your friends you then find an extremely hot girl that is inexplicably interested in you you dry hump all the time on the dance floor and then you go home you have the best night ever then next time your friends show a photo of her and you on the dance floor like oh man that's crazy i didn't know that i had my drunk goggles on that's gonna be sewing he's like oh my god what a big mistake no pillage all this time he thought he was rocking out doing great getting rich and all that getting the best deal ever but no pillage he would have had so much money he would have had so much money if he had pillage i think he lost probably somewhere of like two three thousand resources <laughs> especially the wood that he for the most part was missing almost the entire game he could have had more upgrades those raiders for no extra cost would have been three three upgrades by now nonetheless a very scary army right now no big bad voodoo at this time he could use it but he's chosen just not to use it he must have like level one hex or something and i do agree not using big bad voodoo if you have bloodlust because it insta cleanses away all your own positive buffs from your units that's what invulnerability does Man, I'm trying to think what I would do here as Soin against this. Demolishers with burning oil. They sound good on paper. But they're such a liability. They're slow. I would have definitely had pillage and more raiders. Uh, more uh, raider upgrades. I don't think you can go for wind riders or bat riders. The torrents would be a waste. You could try to add some berserkers. I think... Having added some tier 3 Berserkers would not be a bad investment. And the only other thing you could do maybe is a third hero like Tarn Chieftain. Keep him at the back because he'll die instantly at the front. And then, yeah, burning oil demolishers. Catapults. Yeah, maybe they had a secret deal. I'll sell True Shot if you don't get Pillage. So it was like, deal. I want to see Bladestorm. He's getting a position for a Bladestorm. Will you think of the children? Give them the Bladestorm they deserve. Oh, there's Thorns are right now. These raiders are killing themselves as well. What an insanely chaotic fight. Can you guys follow it? There's a Bladestorm. Not bad. Pretty good. Getting a lot of damage into the Demon Hunter in particular. Not a lot of talent damage, though. We've got 65 population orc against 66 elf. It's a war of attrition. There are losses on both sides. Level 8 blade, level 8 shadow, level 8 keeper, level 8 demon. The snakes are wailing away with every hiss. There's a highly toxic, highly damaging, highly venomous shot fired at one of these poor old men in cloaks these druids and they cannot take the heat but luckily they find a moment of tranquility and suddenly all their wounds are forgotten for a time how much gold is there left five thousand nothing empty uncontested gone gone 10k gone so we've got essentially 5k active mining against no active mining from moon with perhaps this 10k being exploited and this gold mine being at the center of attention and the tree of lives can move he's intentionally choosing not to move his tree of eternity as this is the primary staff of preservation place once the tree of eternity is somewhere else he wouldn't be able to do the trick where he staff of preservates the demon and then staffs of teleports back into the fight after healing from all these moon wells. 
72 pop, no active mining. Now he's mining again. Let's see. What do we got? He's getting extra upgrades. Second armor. So these raiders have been z one armor most of the game. Minus four fairy, so m negative three armor. Now they would be minus one armor. Negative one. And finally, with thorium armor, they're going to be plus one. There will actually be damage reduction from talents, even if they are fairy fired. They'll be quite tanky indeed. Mirror image blood... Mirror image blade master. I'd love to see lightning shield used on multiple talents this time with ensnare. So the way I would play this, six snakes, right? Walk forward with raiders, send images in, and then four ensnares on talents at the same time, four lightning shield at the same time. You would have to split away and fight separately into your snakes. That is a lot of detonates. Detonates. We need heal wave. We need healing. Chief. There's almost no units on the ground. Demon on a metamorphosis. Run. Run for your pitiful lives. Did you see that tranquility? <laughs> That's how long I reach tranquility in nowadays world of uh, YouTube shorts and TikTok and so on. It's like, ah, oh, one moment of... Four snakes. So the tranquility is now on full cooldown. 0 0.2 seconds. Why don't they spam 1k gold units can easily win the game? That's a great question. No, actually, it's... I don't think it is. I don't think that was... Why don't they spam 1k gold units can easily win the game? What? Oh. Oh, okay. You think because they have 1 or 2k in the bank, so long as they just spend it, that can be enough of an advantage to overwhelm the other and win the game right then and there yeah not true not how warcraft 3 works that is starcraft thinking that's age of War empires thinking starcraft thinking warcraft 3 is more timeless it's more important to make sure that every engagement is efficient even if you have a small commando army rather than trying to inject some additional critical mass partially because of the positioning partially because of upkeep system partially because you don't know which units you want to make yet because you don't know which ones you're gonna lose sometimes <laughs> all right that's a lot of detonates he gets the blade storm off he's beelining for the demon honor but there's an invulnerability he's getting about two talents with the blade storm and no mana left on the shadow he just had a mana pot fairy dragons are getting killed and Moon is currently trying to find his receipt for the armor upgrades. For the goggles to do nothing. Those armor upgrades on the fairy dragons. He's like, has it been two weeks yet? Can we still return it? Are there signs of wear and tear? Demon Hunter goes down with a 228 damage critical strike. Raiders are 3-2 in upgrades as well. Blade Master is level 9. Keeper level 9 with the Tranquility. Raider goes forward. He does not Cyclone the Raider, so the Tranquility gets cancelled. Shadow is level 9 as well. And yet I'll be damned if I've ever seen a Hex or a Big Bad Voodoo. He's just leveling up. Just for fun. Just for a bonus attribute points. Meanwhile, Moon snuck off this base so he's actually mining twice as much and his gold mines have twice as much gold each three times as much so we once again have the juxtaposition of a stronger army with stronger heroes from the looks of it against the stronger economy from moon he tried to defuse a blade the keeper with the shaman however Keeper got staffed out and will come back. No special new units yet, just more talents and fairies. Fully committed to present course of action. He has to go back and get some clarity. Three ancient protectors here. All those ancients of war that Moon had before, though, they're gone. Wow, what a game. Ooh, a bit of long distance wood mining. Don't mind if I do. Only have 2,000 wood. 
Maybe you should just use them to attack. If you send all your peons through the talons, because peons are a worker unit, they do not draw aggro. So how about in the next fight, you send all the peons in, so long as you don't attack move with them, they won't draw aggro. When you attack move, they are actually upgraded to military priority, and they will get attacked just the same as uh, as raiders, I believe. Or do they? Oh, I think they're still not prioritized. But anyway, send in the peons, right? And then lightning shield them. And they just walk through the talents. What's he going to do? Cyclone every one of them. That's a waste of mana. Dodge. Kill them. Just attack. Come on. Send in the boys. Bloodlust the peons and lightning shield them. Oh. 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 Moon recognizes the danger. The sheer potential that these peons inhabit inside of them. Even if Soin does not realize yet. Moon realizes it. He casts the big bad voodoo. There can be no cyclones on the blade master. He's invincible. Oh, he cyclones the shadow. He found the Achilles heel. Everything invincible except this unit. Moon is like, oh, this unit? I would cyclone it. Invulnerability on the demon hunter. Firebrand is firing away. And the shamans are not bulletproof. Fairy Dragons did a real dirty number on those shamans. I saw a massive arcane flare explosion on that pack line. 600 gold left. Maybe it's time to research pillage. Double clarity mana pot. Oh, no, no mana burn my shadow. I just got this clarity. I want to see the damage a raider puts on the talent. Oh, chomp. <laughs> Chompy. Ah, uh, I think Moon is taking it. Another invul on the Heman Dunter. Mana burn, 99. There's no mana left. This Shadow Hunter is one very overly buffed weightlifting headhunter. Because he has no magic. Not anymore. Oh my god, he gets the demon! <laughs> Keeper of the Grove running away. He still has Town Portal. The Demon is down and the Blade Master is level 10. He TPs out. Demon Hunter once again fell. He can remake it. It's something like 900 gold, which is a lot. But I mean, let's face it, we're rich. We got 6,000 gold here, 11,000 gold there. Look at those stats. Beautiful. 38, 38, 39. Shadow, 31, 33, 37. Keeper, 30, 27, 39. Hey, we're scaling, huh? Or maybe he didn't pick up as many tomes. Where's the demon? Okay, he's back. All right. So he rebotted from tavern and then staffed home and then attacked before his demon is back. Bad communication in this game, in this MOBA game between the different players. Oh, wait, they're all controlled by the same guy. Well, he shows up fashionably late as anti-mage often does. It's very simple here how to play as Elf. Just make sure that the random chance of evasion coincides with the random chance of critical strike every time. Then you won't take a lot of damage on your demon. That's how you gotta plan these things. No more gold, just peons. Literally, every unit that dies for Soy now is a unit that dies. And will never come back. He cannot replace any shamans. He can't replace any raiders. Moon is at 62 pops. I I don't know what it would take for Soin to break him anymore. If I was part of the Night Elf propaganda lobby, I would point at this game and say, this Soin guy nearly took down Moon and didn't even research pillage. This is the orc brain in action. This... That's how I would try to make my case for imbalance argument, which is one of the most important skills in Warcraft 3, is to wind Imba better than the others. 
dangle on the image. Another metamorphosis. There is enough mana for tranquility if he spends it on nothing else. Keeper is also almost level 10, which is a very, very significant Thorns level 3 upgrade. Because he literally did not max Thorns until now, despite the mass raiders and the blade master. He no longer has mana for tranquility, unless he levels up. Yeah, he has enough. He can tranquility right now. Oh. No. Blade. The blade. The blade. GG. Moon takes it. Level 10, 10. The entire map on Turtle Rock mined out. 55 minutes. Oh, look at those stats. Hero score. They're maxed out two heroes. 251 against 53 kills. 253. Level 10, 10, 10, 10. You don't see this every day. And the amount of money mined. That's crazy. GG. Moon wins. It's up to the grub.